Hello, everybody. Drew, aka Catching Rockets, here. Um, before I get started, I'm still pretty sick. Uh, have a pretty bad cough today, so I'm gonna do my best to get through this video um, without coughing too much. Really, just want to get these videos out to you guys and hopefully provide you guys some value and help some people out with trading. Um, today, I'm gonna take a step back. Um, I'm feeling especially not good today. So um, originally I wanted to dive deeper into like more technical analysis, but today I'm just going to give you guys a couple of um, trades that you can use every day um, right away um, to grow an account, essentially. Um, what brought this about was I got a really good question um, from one of my videos or actually the last video I posted. I've been getting a lot of great questions. Um, and this question here was like, all right, um, let me cover this for you guys. So Raxith asked regarding the value area in intraday, intraday trades, since the VPSV is still forming during the day, is it better to apply the 80% towards the latter half of the trading session once the value area has been established and prices above below is re-entering, ideally should price consolidate at some point in the morning to create a value area that price can make the cross from one side to the other later in the day. Later in the day, I see it's easier to identify post trading session compared to watching it develop live, unless I am missing something. But as you mentioned in your example, this doesn't happen every trading session for a particular stock. So should it just be something to look out for if the setup presents itself? And just once again, I just want to say it's a, it's a really great, great question. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to hit the replay feature on um, trading view here. We'll go back. I don't know. This should be enough. And just like the question said, since the value area is being formed, um, it's going to be moving as um, as the stock is establishing itself. I don't normally draw these lines to highlight the value area, but I'm going to do it just to make it clearer for um, people watching. Um, normally, I'll just eyeball where the highlighted area is on the screen. So anyway, we'll start replaying this. This should go pretty quick because um, I have it set to... Um, pretty, you know, to update pretty quickly. Normally I trade three minute candles, but I'm using one minute candles um, because the replay feature, it doesn't let me watch the full three minute candle play out. It just pops the entire three minute candle up on the screen and I, I'll probably miss my entry um, using three minute candles on this replay. So we're just doing one minute for the replay itself. So right here, we just dipped out of the value area, but the stock has established itself in this value area, correct? Everybody can see that. Um, and like I said, it's going to keep moving, and that's perfectly fine. So here it's gone significantly lower. moving down again here and the top has moved down as well for me as a trader um, right now I would be less interested in the 80% rule and more interested in playing a bounce from this demand zone here um, but again I want to give you guys a clear you know a lot of people look for like rules that they can follow. This is a riskier trade, um, taking a bounce from a demand zone or taking a rejection from a supply zone. But me as a trader, this is where I'm looking to enter. Once I start to see a reversal here, or if I see volume ramping up, I'm taking calls here to the upside. And I guess essentially I would end up probably playing this 80% rule as well. But let's see how this plays out. 
Yeah, so me as a trader right here, I'm interested. Um, I'm probably taking calls. And again, riskier trade, I would have a very tight stop loss if I did this. And I probably would have got stopped out here. So I'm just trying to be as real as possible with you guys. I'm not perfect. Um, but I would have tried to play that bounce there, and I probably would have got faked out here. Um, this is an indecisive candle, a little doji. So I might have stayed in, because that normally indicates a reversal. Um, it's hard to say what I would do, you know, after the fact. But I might have given it a little bit more time with this doji um, to see if it reversed. When you're playing with real money, you know, and not just talking about it, things change. Here's my entry right there. Um, this is also an indecisive candle, but we gapped from here to here. So that's a pretty solid entry for me for playing the value area. So as you've seen, I've been moving these a lot. The value area keeps moving, um, just like the question said, as this trading day goes on. But right now... We've established ourselves in this in this value area. We've left it, and now we're re-entering. Um, one of two things plays out: either we cross to the other side, or we come in a little bit, get a retest, or you know, leave and get a retest, and then cross to the other side. Um, I'm happy playing both. If I take calls here and it rejects here at this forming POC, which I actually expect to happen, I'm happy to take my profits here. Um, and then if it dips back out and comes back in again, I'm happy to retake re the trade again. But um, I haven't planned any of this out, so let's see what happens. I'm in the trade right here with calls. And I would have been faked out. Definitely would have got out on this candle. Um, and would have hopped back in here. And it actually looks like the value air area moved. But so yeah, I would have hopped back in calls here. Again, watching for a rejection here. It looks like we're getting through it. I just want to point out, um, you know, I've said read volume price analysis by Anna Cooling. Right here we have volume decreasing and price increasing so this is a volume anomaly um, which normally indicates a reversal and again we're right at that forming POC for the day so I'm probably getting out on this blue candle based on um, volume decreasing but again let's just see what happens I mean, there's your 80% rule. This has moved a little bit. Again, not a big deal. But we entered on one side and went to the other side. Like I said, I, I would have got faked out here on this candle. Um, actually, I take that back. This is a very, um, like a, a pretty good, um, excuse me, what's the word I'm looking for? It's a pretty good reversal candle. So when I see this buying pressure on this wick, I might have stayed in the trade. Um, again, it's really hard to say, like, in retrospect, not playing with real money. Um, obviously, talking about it is way different than playing with real money. But with this candle, with all of this buying pressure, there is a chance I would have stayed in. Um, if I didn't, I would definitely buy back in when we cross over here. Um, and play to the outside, there's a good chance I'd get out here. Actually, I guarantee you I would have got out here um, on this blue candle. <clears throat> so there's the 80% rule for you. Um, this is happening, you know, like on a replay, yes, the ver value area does reestablish and change and keep moving. Excuse me, I had to cough again there. 
But so that's how you take that trade. Pretty easy. Um, and very effective. It works really well. The other type of trade I want to go over with you guys. Um, so like I mentioned down here, when we, when I dip down into a into a supply I'm sorry a demand zone, um, I'm looking to take calls on the break here, versus just trying to play out that eighty percent rule. Um, same thing up here. When I cross back below um, this supply zone, I would be taking puts. This might not look like much of a move, but this is thirty seventy two eighty. Um, down to 30.66. Um, you're making plenty of money playing puts here. Um, same thing here. You know, I've said before the retest is normally a bigger move. Um, same thing, happy to take puts here down. But again, these are going to be riskier plays. Um, so if you do this, you want to have tighter stop losses when you enter these trades. So the other type of um, trade I wanted to talk about, I like to look at on the three minute. I've actually never traded this myself, but um, my mentor used it to grow one of his his first accounts. Um, you wanna be on three minute candles. You wanna use um, VWAP. And your um, 9 EMA. So you can see this is an EMA. The length is 9. You want to turn off extended hours. And what you're looking for when you trade this is um, for price. Or actually, um, we'll look at this two ways. I would suggest anything that you see me talking about. You backtest for yourself um, and see how you want to trade. But um, the way my mentor explained this to me is when the 9 EMA crosses above VWAP and then you have two candles um, close above, you would take calls. Um, this here... You know, we would have you you could make a tiny bit of money here on this move, but um, you probably get faked out here. Um, technically, you want to wait for a candle to close below the nine EMA before you get out of the trade, um, and this would have played out really well for you. Um, the other thing, like I've already discussed, the retest is always going to be your bigger move. So with this, if you're waiting for the retest, you get the cross of the VWAP. You wait for your candles to come back down and retest your 9 EMA. And then you take calls when you cross above the 9 EMA here and play it to the upside. Same thing here, retest, take calls. And as long as you stay above the 9 EMA, you can stay in the trade. And then right here, boom, you get out. Um, for puts, you just literally want the exact exact opposite. You want the VWAP, I'm sorry, the 9 EMA to cross below the VWAP. And then you want your two candles and you would take puts, you know, from here down. Again, um, might look like a smaller move. 290, sorry, 29.94 down to... 29.84 so it's a 10 point move um, if you happen to take this little trade here but again your bigger bigger move is going to be the retest hop in um, retest again and hop in um, that's really going to be it for me tonight excuse me I know this isn't one of my better videos but hopefully um, you know, something you guys can backtest the the eighty percent rule and the nine EMA VWAP cross. Um, 
and see if you can implement that, implement that into your trading style. Um, like I said, my, um, my mentor, he literally grew his first account, um, from pretty small to a very large account, um, trading the nine EMA VWAP cross and also the 80% rule. Um, anyway, keep up the great questions, guys. Um, I'm sure you've seen, I'm very attentive. I'll answer, um, I answer questions pretty quickly. Um, and even went as far as making a video to answer a question. Um, so really hope this helps you guys out. Much love. Um, best of luck to everybody in your trading. Um, and have a great day. See y'all later. Bye.